So let's take a look at the Munsell soil color charts. And we're going to try to assign a hue, value, and chroma to our soil sample. Now I wanted to give you each one of these books, but they're $200 each, believe it or not, $200. And Pantone bought it. So uh, now if you want one of these, it's 200 bucks. But uh, we'll try to do it virtually and I'll demonstrate how to do it with the actual book. If you were going to become a true soil scientist, you could invest in a $200 book but if you're just going to work with plants, this is not something you need to own necessarily. So as we go through, we can see all the different colors, similar to like uh, paint chips. They're arranged in a spectrum and the, uh, there's a plastic sheet covering, so to try to help keep it clean. And then behind each of the pages, there are well, there's holes in the middle and so that's so you could hold us uh, you can hold your soil up to the hole and try to see which color best matches if you look on the opposite page there are the actual names of the colors in the top corner here that is the name of the hue and so starting over here, we have 10R. R is red. So this is a red hue. Here's 5YR. So that's a yellow red hue. And then if we go all the way toward the back, we have, well, actually, that's a, another YR. There we go. There's our. 2.5 Y, so that this is a yellow hue. And you can see the names of the soil color correspond with this hue. Uh, the value is on the left hand side. So as you go lower in number, it goes down to black and higher in number goes up to white and so you can see the, the comparisons of the different values here and then your chroma is going to be on the bottom so the highest chroma is going to be the deepest colors and the lowest chroma is going to be absent of those pigments and you see the spectrum in between. So how do we take our soil and try to compare it with these color charts? Well, there's a few things we've got here. We've got some masks and you can see it's been used before so it's a little dirty. But uh, to, your eye can be uh, kind of tricked when you look at all of these different colors it's hard to see them apart so we use the mask to help block out different colors so that we can only make subtle comparisons you notice the sun is I'm in mean, full sun in daylight and you want the sun shining over your shoulder down onto the material you don't want any shadows or any shade and if you're in a light soil you can use a, a dark colored mask. If you're in a dark soil, you can use a light colored mask. And there's uh, several ways to try to take our soil sample and compare it to the book. So I'm going to start over here on the, the red page. And I've done a few things. First, the original intent for this is for you to use a natural head. So a little clod of soil and then you're supposed to find a natural clot of soil and then break it apart. This is the leftover from my soil test. So when I did the soil test, I saved my little ball. 
we're just going to pretend that this is a ped and you want to make you want to break it open so that it's untouched soil and ideally it should be a little bit moist so if it needs to be you can wet it down with a spray bottle but this is plenty wet here and you literally just uh, hold this up like so and you're trying to find the closest match now if uh, if that's a little tricky you can undo these pages and this is where you actually hold the soil behind and you try and compare the color now I'm not necessarily going to be hmm, let's see I'm not necessarily going to be studying this too closely because I'm still trying to figure out my hue my, my broad category so on this page uh, this bottom corner this bottom left one looks all right looks pretty good it's not perfectly there my soil to my eye not through the camera lens but to my eye my soil looks to have a bit more of a yellowish hue as opposed to the red this looks a bit kind of warm or creamy to my eye and so what I'm going to do is put this page back and skip over to Here's a yellow, red, I'm going to skip over here. Okay. So I have found that when I compare all the different colors, I think this one right here looks like my winner. And I can use the mask to just try to help clarify, help me to choose between two colors. And yeah, I'm gonna go with this one. Gonna go with this one right here and so this looks like it will be 2.5 y 3 2 so if we go to find that on the next page uh, here on 2.5 y 3 2 that looks like that color is called very dark grayish brown so that's my soil color very dark grayish brown now if you don't have a ped if you can't find one of these uh, you could make one of course you can also just take your soil and lay it out in the sun and try to find ideally you've got some sort of a uniform color and you can do the same thing you can take your uh, page and you can lay it over top and you try to find where the color looks to be the closest match. And if that also is difficult because your soil is dry and the color is maybe washed out, you can always take a bit of water. You can take a scrap piece of paper, take a little bit of water, and we can make a little bit of a paint, soil paint. So you can make yourself a little paste and with that you can refer to your color chart and you can 
look through the page and you can try to see. When you hold this up, what does it look like? I'm going to redo it with uh, wet and see if my uh, analysis changes at all. Yeah, so even with the wetted soil, I'm going to place my soil in the same category, this one here. And you'll be surprised that uh, it's quite accurate. It's not 100% accurate, of course. There's some subjectivity here. But the goal for this is to try to standardize so that when I look at something, uh, you'll see the same thing. So I'm gonna write down that this is very dark grayish brown soil. And then I'll write down my hue, value, and chroma. So that way it can give me some clues as to the mineral content of this soil.